on this episode. I mean, he's leading by his jaw. The panic on his face, yeah. and mine, is awful. Wilberforce has a huge list of problems, with Scott under pressure to help him. Definitely more challenging than I anticipated. So we're in a bit of a spot with him. A dilemma for Kate when Archie needs surgery. Remember what happened last time and it went very badly. Ah! She doesn't trust me. <laughs> and a feisty patient for Olivia. I'm definitely going to have my work cut out for me on this one. Come on, there's your girl. <laughs> <gasps> oh, look, I see your friend coming. Hi, Wilbur. Come here. In London, an unusual consult for Scott today at a local park. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> crazy puppies. <laughs> crazy puppies. <laughs> crazy owner. Hello, hey, gorgeous. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Scott's meeting close friend Ali and her new rescue dog, Wilberforce, and he's brought along his own new pup, Ludo. Good. Hi, Wilbur. <laughs> Look, there's your new friend. Look. I've known Ali for about 10 years now, ever since she walked into my veterinary practice with her beloved dog, Ruck, and since then we've become friends. She is an amazing dog owner. Scott helped Ali through the heartbreak of losing Ruck to cancer and then her next dog, Mabel. My new baby girl. Can't sleep forever. Ali can't help herself when it comes to animals in need and her new rescue one-year-old Wilbur definitely also needs Scott's help. So go on, like, rattle off the list. So what, well, what list of problems do you want me to fix? <laughs> so there's the obvious. His nostrils are tiny little slits. His soft palate is clearly stuck in his throat a lot of the time. Obviously, I think you're going to take his ghoulies off tomorrow because he's a rescue. Yes. And then on top of that, there's the um, face fold. Yeah. British Bulldogs are part of the brachycephalic group of dogs, which is basically flat-faced. They've been bred to have flatter and flatter faces and as a result really struggle to breathe, have loads of skin problems. If you could hear him trying to sleep, uh, I mean there's a couple of times he's had no air and the panic on his face yeah. and mine is awful. I mean when you see these two dogs, the contrast of Ludo leading by her nose, I mean he's leading by his jaw. <laughs> It's, it's mad. Add to that that his nostrils are effectively tiny because like, they're just like little slits. They're not really holes. They're letter boxes. He just can't get any air in. Ali is such an amazing dog owner. She's a real pragmatist. She knew she was taking on a bull breed that has certain issues. She'd done the research, she'd asked me about it, and she's ready to go to manage those situations. Hi, oh, puppies. Who's the a patient? Nice consult room. There we go. Oh, there you are, yeah, patient. consult room with a view. Looking at Wilbur, the facial folds are so prominent and pronounced, it's, it's almost like he's got like a fleshy speed bump in the way of his eyes. You can see him wince a bit sometimes when you clean it, so I know it's sore. Oh, there'll be a level of discomfort in that for sure. I mean, yeah. it's a bit of redness um, and irritation. Wilbur is going to need extensive surgery. This very much is a facelift for dogs. It's not something that we have to do very often, thank goodness, but in this case it's very much needed and rather than being something to make you look good, it's going to make him feel better. I don't have to worry about how he looks, I can make sure that he's as healthy as he can possibly be and for me that's thrilling. Wilbur will be heading straight to Scott's practice for what Ali hopes will be life-changing surgery for the little dog. That breaks my heart because he hasn't got a tail to wag, so it's occasionally he just like wags his little hips and you think, yeah. what have we done to him? What have we done to him? It's okay, bum bum. In Bondi, owners Kim and Sam have brought their beloved French bulldog Archie in to see Kate. Ah, hello. Fancy seeing you. Kate is clearly smitten with the little three-year-old, but it's not a social call. You're good. Thank you, good boy. Are you ready? 
<laughs> Do you still love coming to the vet after all this time? I know. It's beautiful, isn't it? Come on in, you guys. Archie's one of my favourite French bulldogs in the whole world. I met Archie the very first day that he arrived in Bondi and he's been a very special dog since because we've been through a lot together. So what are you guys here for? Um, it's great so, to see you. Thank you as well. It's been a while luckily, like, usually we're here more frequently. Um, but we brought Archie in for his annual um, and noticed a bump on his arm. Okay. So we just thought, I don't know, is it a ward, is it something? We okay. thought we'd get your opinion since you're the expert on Archie. And, um, and how long have, yeah. do you think it's been there? That was about a week ago and then it looks like it's like grown in size. Okay. So we um, are concerned. And you're talking like doubled in size or you just noticeably kind of... Just a little bit more, like so when we took him in that first time and noticed it, since then, which was about a week ago, it's just got a little bit bigger. Like it's more uh, noticeable. Maybe it's double. like a war. Maybe double, yeah. Okay. But there's a bit of it that's like kind of dead as well, so we don't know, yeah. It just looks a bit scary. Okay. So it's a bit difficult, isn't it? Yeah. We knew that at some point we were going to be like, oh no, we're faced with a situation where we're going to have to do something to Archie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, let's have a look at your little lump. Come on. Come on. There we go. Good job. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. You want to just get up here for a minute? Let's go have a look. It's on your front leg. Front yeah, left. Yeah. Left, front left. Mm, that's a bother, isn't it? A big bother. So you guys, this is a mass, and it looks to me like it's gonna be some kind of a tumor. Whether that be something that's benign or malignant, so dangerous or not dangerous, I don't know the answer, but it's definitely not a wart. I see what you mean about the end of it being a bit dead. Mm. This looks like the top at some point has fallen off and it's been bleeding. Yeah, is so we right? grazed it and it was bleeding like crazy. Okay. So that's, and that's happened within like, what, the last couple of days? Yeah, um, four days ago. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we're just really worried about it being anything yeah. more serious. This lump is growing. That's a problem. I don't know what it is, but we can't do nothing about it because if we do nothing, it could end up the size of an apple and we can't take it off. Kate is keen to remove the worrying lump immediately and get it biopsied. But there's a major problem. So we're in a bit of a spot with him. So remember what happened last time we tried to anaesthetise him and it went very badly. A routine dental procedure two years ago almost had a tragic end. Every time we took the tube out to take him out of anaesthetic, his trachea and the whole back of his mouth would collapse. He went into respiratory arrest, he tried to die like four times. We managed to resuscitate him and get his tube back in, but then we couldn't actually take the tube out. So every single time we took the tube out, the whole airway would collapse. I mean, he's an airway disaster. So Archie's not a great anaesthetic candidate. I think you could probably safely say that mm -hmm. if, unless we absolutely have to put him under a general anaesthetic, then he's not going under one. Yeah. That is definitely a tumour, but I just can't tell you whether it's actually something benign or malignant. So we kind of at this point have to really weigh up whether or not the lump itself is more dangerous than the anaesthetic. And in my opinion, I personally think that the anaesthetic is more dangerous than the lump. Let's say it's malignant, let's say it grows, we're in a bit of trouble. If we put him under a general anaesthetic, we're potentially in a lot of trouble. That's a good boy. In we go. This way, pop it. In London, welfare warrior Ali is bringing her rescue bulldog Wilberforce to Scott's practice for a marathon day of surgery. Hello, team. Hi, Wilbur. Hi. Hi. Oh, my God. He's like, he's like a, a rugby player in a like dog's boy. body. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you? The one-year-old will be having five procedures to correct genetic abnormalities and give him a more comfortable life. Bulldogs are a damaged breed thanks to human beings. Um, we have shunted them, squashed their faces, damaged their backs, their spines, their tails, all kinds of things um, with a view to making them look like we want them to look like. Has mummy got her shopping list? There you go. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I was thinking of this going, 
You know, most people like they go, okay, what's the shopping list today? It's like broccoli, maybe some eggs. Yeah. Wilberforce <laughs> is having having a castration and a nose job. He is. <laughs> so I've known Scott a long time, um, and he's always mocking me for my Excel spreadsheets. So today I couldn't help myself. I've written him a list. I'm looking forward to this because I think you know he's such a lovely dog, and give him he the best just, chance. Yeah, yeah. He, well, I mean, he just deserves to be able to to breathe better. Wilbs, say goodbye to mummy. Go on then. Darling. I absolutely trust Scott. Um, we've known each other a long time. He's great, but he's my friend. Um, but I think anyone whose dog is going under the knife and under anaesthetic is always a little bit anxious. Oh, see you soon. Try not to worry too much. I won't. All I'm right. Keep yourself busy. I've got my list. <laughs> Mum. Tick it off. See you later. <laughs> Bye. I'll be checking Bye. it twice. It's daunting going into surgery with such a long list simply because you know that your patient might be under anaesthetic for a really long time. Are you looking forward to your facelift? Eh? I'll have to get one of those in a couple of years. Eh? Eh? Assisting Scott is Nurse Nathan. So first on the list is assessing Wilbur's eyelashes. A lot of British Bulldogs suffer with something called ectopic scylla. They're really irritating eyelashes. Rather than growing out of the eyes, they sort of grow down and they can rub on the eye, causing a corneal ulcer or damage to that protective surface of the eye. Okay. So his eyes are clear, so that's good. But what he has got is just a little slight amount of inrolling of the eyelid. But it is only mild, I've seen way worse and I'm hopeful that just by removing the skin fold beneath, I can produce enough tension to be able to just slightly roll it out without the actual need to perform surgery there as well. Oh, look at that. Next is a check of Wilbur's soft palate. That's the soft palate flapping in the wind there. And you can see how it's going right down and into his larynx, and that's not what should happen. Looking down the throat of Wilbur, I'm not surprised to see that his soft palate is elongated and it is flapping away inside his larynx there. That is making for a lot of difficulty breathing and also some of the noise involved as well. Yeah, so he definitely needs that trimming. It's not the worst I've seen, um, but you know, it's, it'll definitely be improved just by being a little bit trimmed, that one. The surgery itself is pretty straightforward. We almost evert it kind of like a second tongue and then I just kind of lop off the section in the middle, just shortening it. And instead of having that flap, you've now got sort of a lovely bridge that allows air to flow right through the throat and down into the airways. Okay, all right, everyone ready? As they say, measure twice, cut once. And I'm very happy. I think it looks so much better. And that should have quite a quick result in improving his ability to breathe and certainly might reduce that snoring. So that's the first surgical element ticked off the list and now we're going to move to the nostrils and that skin fold. This is the part Scott's most nervous about, remodelling the bulldog's face. <sighs> Deep breath everyone. and it looks to me like it's going to be some kind of a tumour. Yeah, I don't know, I guess we're just really worried about it being anything <laughs> more serious. In Bondi, Kate needs to somehow work out how to remove a worrying tumour on Archie's leg without a general anaesthetic because of the risks involved. I always knew that one day we were going to get to this point. Archie was going to come walking through that door and he's going to need a general anaesthetic because there's going to be something wrong with him. Keen to remove the lump as safely as possible, Kate has a plan. I think really with the information that we have at this point in time, the safest thing to do would be to do a local anaesthetic, cut it off and don't do a general anaesthetic. I think leaving it there it poses a risk yeah. because if we leave it there, let's say it's malignant, let's say it grows, we're in a bit of trouble. If we put him under a general anaesthetic, we're potentially in a lot of trouble. And I think that if you want to try and balance out the risks of this, I think that that would be a reasonably good solution at this point in time. You guys must be quite worried about this. Yeah, definitely, I think. Honestly, those days back when we originally did the first anaesthetic, I didn't think that Archie was going to live. 
Yeah, same. So even the fact that he's gotten this far, I think, oh my gosh, we have done well. Yeah. yeah. So anything we can do to avoid um, repeating those steps. <laughs> I'm sure I'm do that again. All right, Archie Bear. Goodbye, little buddy. We'll see you soon. Okay? Love you. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs> So I've suggested something I possibly wouldn't suggest to any other dog apart from Archie and that is to do this under a local anaesthetic so that Archie can't feel the bottom of his front paw. What we've got is we've got a lump and we've got a growing lump so we're going to cut it off. Oink, oink, oink Archie. Mm -hmm, you're a vet's worst nightmare with that breathing. Vet nurse Maria will be assisting Kate with the delicate procedure. So let's just check which one it's on. This one. So I need that leg going to be super quick and super easy it's just having a tiny little IV catheter and just doing it just to be safe okay just safe good boy there we go good job <sighs> deep breath everyone in London Scott and vet nurse Nathan are continuing marathon surgery on one-year-old Wilberforce. The next step is the neuroplasty or nose job for Wilbur. And it's basically where we take a triangle out of each of the nostrils and flare them upwards just to increase the size, the diameter of the nostrils, which has a massive impact on his ability to take in deeper breaths. So now he's got nostrils, quite big ones as well, which is, um, no bad thing. Oh, okay, right, so that's that done. So now, facial fold time. Mm. Scott's removing some of the excess skin around Wilbur's face to reduce the infection and inflammation in the excessively deep folds. His facial muscles are reacting. It's nerve wracking. It's really hard. <laughs> It's actually quite difficult to get into these folds and make sure that you're removing the right amount and you're actually cutting a little bit blind as well. So, yeah, because there's a lot of blood vessels. There's important structures underneath. Um, and because of how deep the folds are, you're doing a lot of the surgery blind. So um, <clears throat> definitely more challenging <laughs> than I anticipated. With the troublesome skin folds finally removed, Scott's anxious to make sure that after all the delicate cutting, Wilbur's vital tear ducts running between his eyes and nose are still intact. In this dog's particular case, it's so deeply positioned that it was pretty much impossible for me to see before I did or didn't cut. So I'm just putting some dye in his eye um, and if everything is fine, it should trickle, it, well, certainly there should be some, some green now I'm coming out of his nose quite shortly. Just a bit nervous on this right side, it's just had a bit of a bleeder. I can't see anything coming out actually into the surgical space, so I mean, they could have been blocked before. With no telltale dye coming through, a nervous Scott is going to flush the tear ducts, suspecting there may be an existing blockage. Just think of Ali, she doesn't realise how much pain you're going through now. Doing yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some more grey hairs to add to the collection. He's got flat face, therefore he does tend to get blocked tear ducts, but with a bit of flushing, I could see that lovely trickle of luminous green coming out of his nose, which probably for the first time is a really good thing. I can breathe now. <laughs> Onto needle work now? Yep, yep, loads and loads of sutures. It's such a relief to have this surgery nearly completed and to be able to see that my handiwork has paid off. His face looks good and there's no more folds so I'm pretty happy vet right now. That looks good. Be the envy of the uh, bulldogs in the park. Yeah, look at my <laughs> non-wrinkly face. <laughs> Dr Scotty's taking the years off me. <laughs> but Scott can't relax just yet. Okay, so last thing. Oh. Castration, yes. I bet Wilbur um, hoped that I'd forgotten that one. So this is the final cut. Someone say the most painful cut of all. 
Okay, and that's that. Okay, I never want to have to remove something from this dog again. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. It's, it's been uh, intense and long, but you know, um, we've ended up with a really good result. After that marathon surgery, I'm absolutely knackered. Uh, it was a long list. I checked it twice. I completed it once, and now I need a nap. And a much quieter Wilberforce is also enjoying a well-earned snooze. Ah! You in a pet? <laughs> she doesn't trust me. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have my work cut out for me on this one. At Sash, a day in the life of exotic pet specialist Olivia is always interesting. I never know what I'm going to see on my day to day. Hello. I could be seeing a turtle one minute, the next I could be seeing a rabbit. Good morning. Today in hospital I have Azula, the blue and gold macaw, and she's in a lot of trouble because her owner Shani thinks she might have eaten rat bait. Yeah. It must have been quite a fright for you. Did you just find the rat bait? Yeah, the... it was just on the kitchen floor, oh, so I was okay. out buying bird food familiarly enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mm -hmm. husband's She thought she'd find floor. her own bird food. Yeah, and then so we don't even really know if she had any or not. Yeah. But she just ripped the box to mm. shreds. Still good that you brought her in. It's never worth taking any chances with that stuff mm -hmm. because it's so poisonous. Time is now critical. If Azula has eaten rat bait, deadly poison could already be circulating around her body. Hi, Azula. Ah. It's time for your blood test. Oh, ah. I know. Rat bait is really poisonous to all animals. And basically what rat bait does is it interferes with the vitamin K cycle in the body. Ah. Vitamin K is necessary to make clotting factors so that the blood in the body can clot. Good girl, Azula. Ah. I got you, you're okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna get some blood from Azula today to see how well her blood is clotting and to see if she's developed anemia or low red blood cells. Without these, any animal that ingests rat bait will unfortunately bleed to death. Oh. Ah. Ready? But to do this safely, I need to anaesthetize her. Sleepy as Anesthetic in birds can be risky, but Olivia has no choice. Because we don't know if her blood is actually able to clot properly. If I take this blood sample while she's awake and she gets scared and she starts moving around, that could be life threatening because she could lose blood just by moving. If I put her under an anesthetic, I know she's going to be calm and still. Heart rate's a little bit slow. In London, night has fallen by the time Ali returns to Scott's practice to collect her boy Wilberforce. Her one-year-old bulldog is ready to go home after marathon surgery to correct a long list of genetic abnormalities. Today's been a really long wait. It's always long because you're anxious and you're checking your phone for an update, but um, it's just waiting is always really hard when you want to get your little boy home, really. Right. Here's the new face reveal. Hi, little guy. Oh, you do look a bit swollen. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I know, that too. Yeah. You've, you've got a load of space under his nostrils, though. Yeah. See? And the facial folds? It's gone. Yeah. Uh. I know, Bobby. I could have made a small Wilberforce purse out of the amount of skin I've removed. Oh, dude, you darling. It's going to feel better soon, I promise. Oh, I love him. I'm very happy with it. Well, if you're really happy with it, I mean, yeah. I'm really happy with it. it. It looks kind of like I was expecting it to look. Yes. He's had a bad day, but I think it's a, a day that needed to be had, and this is the sort of start of the rest of his life where he'll be Absolutely. comfortable, he'll breathe a lot better. Uh, yeah, it's happy just days. the worst day. It's all good from now. Yeah. It's all getting better. Yeah. I'm not promising the next four days are going to be easy, but 
For Wilberforce, it's definitely life-changing surgery. For any brachycephalic breed, it's life-changing surgery. I feel bad for him, but I was contemplating that today, going for two weeks of discomfort and soreness for him for a lifetime of benefit. It's definitely the right decision, it's definitely worth it, but the next couple of days particularly, I think I'll feel a bit sad for him. Hey, You've had a few too many at the pub, haven't you? Good boy. It's warmer. Yes. Oh, no. oh, good. Despite feeling miserable now, Wilbur has a bright future and plenty of thank you kisses for Scott. Oh, you support baby. You've had a bad day, haven't you? Oh, you are lovely. I think that he is going to have a, a wonderful recovery and a really great new life. I mean, this is a dog that's come out of the box genetically not particularly blessed, but hopefully with what I've done today, tinkering about uh, with his face and his soft palate, etc., this is a dog that's going to breathe so much better and therefore live a far more healthy and comfortable life. Okay, come on then, buddy. Let's go. Home time now. Come on. Will I do five surgeries in one again? Probably not. All right, I'm going to give you a hug and I'm going to go lay down. I know. Bye. Heart rate's a little bit slow. At Sash in Sydney, Olivia's very noisy patient, Azula, could be in serious trouble. I'll just turn it down a little bit. Rat bait interferes with vitamin K, the clotting factor in blood. So Olivia needs to anaesthetise Azula so she can do urgent tests. Birds can be very sensitive to the anaesthetics and so we need to be really careful and try and keep our anaesthetic as short as possible. That's good, it's sped up a little bit now. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Alrighty, going in. So breathing well. Good, good. We need to be very careful when we get this blood sample and we need to make sure that we put a lot of pressure on the vein afterwards so that she doesn't risk leading out. All right, John. that's a mil. I'm just gonna turn it down. Mm -hmm. Let's pop that in there. Yes. Nick looks great. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I think we can turn her off. Okay. We're not getting any bruising or anything no, that like that? Really okay, awesome. Oh, she's already waking up. <laughs> Well done, Azula. Hey, sleepyhead. Hello. I'm really relieved that the anaesthetic has gone smoothly. Azula's woken up. We haven't had any complications. Hi. Ah. How are you going? Ah. Have you got your legs ah. back? What do you think? Do you want to go back ah. to your cage? Do you think you can stand now, Azula? Ah. Let's try. So it'll be a couple of hours before this blood test result comes back. So it's a bit of a nervous wait to see what her red blood cells are doing and if she has eaten this rat bait or not. You don't remember a thing, do you? Hey? Good boy. In Bondi, anaesthetic risk Archie needs to have a potentially dangerous lump removed. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If we don't remove this today, there is a chance that this is going to grow. So even though it might not be something malignant or nasty, the reality is it still could grow. And if it grows big enough, we're going to end up with a really big problem on our hands because he's going to have this giant mass on his leg. So it's got to come off, regardless of what it is. Kate has an ambitious plan to perform the surgery without Archie being fully anaesthetised. So now we've got IV access. It just means that we can actually give him medications without it hurting. He doesn't know that we're giving it to him. I'm just gonna give him a little bit of anti-nausea medication. And this is just for safety. And this just means that it stops them from vomiting. These little brachycephalics or squishy nosed dogs have a tendency to vomit. And we don't really want that happening. Obviously it can be quite dangerous in terms of them aspirating back into their lungs. So we're just trying to make sure that nothing bad happens. Owners Kim and Sam are keeping a nervous vigil as they wait for news of their beloved Archie. We're just going to take all of this fur away because that's obviously contaminant and it means that we're just trying to avoid it not getting infected after. These guys are going to go down the coast for a holiday and we're definitely not stopping that. 
Looking at this, I can't really tell what it is. So it could be as simple as something like a little adenoma. Those guys are completely benign, nothing to worry about, even though they do grow. Or it could be something that what I call the great pretenders and the great pretenders, things like sarcomas, mast cell tumors. And we need to send this one off for testing because it really could be anything. And what I don't want for Archie is to say, don't worry about it, just leave it there. And it becomes the size of an apple. And then what are we going to do about it? And imagine if it is something malignant and it goes to his lymph nodes or whatever. We just don't want that for him. Sorry. This is just some local anaesthetic. Instead of a risky full anaesthetic, Kate is going to simply numb the area around the suspicious lump. I know, I know, buddy, I know. know. It would feel like going to the dentist and having a needle to do your teeth. I know, I know. You know, that know, kind of really stings. It's not pleasant, I'll tell you that. I know, I know that I hurts, know, I know that I know, hurts. Know, it's just the beginning ones that hurt. The reality is, as Archie's awake, he knows what's going on and you want to make sure that you minimise the distress that Archie feels about this and you need to make sure this is quick. Well done. Well done, good boy. So I've just basically ring blocked the whole part of that lump. So the whole area in that bottom part of the foot is anaesthetised. He can't feel it and it means then I can chop that little lump off pretty easily without him knowing about it. I'm just going to keep this as sterile as we possibly can. Thanks. A little lump. I'm just going to put it in a little pot and we're going to send that away for sampling. And now the trick is we're going to have to stop this from bleeding. I'm just going to put a little stitch in here. Gosh, he's very snoozy. I didn't even intend to, for him to be this snoozy. Very snorry. <laughs> he's not great at breathing. It's good. It's great. This was a lot less traumatic for everyone than last time we tried to do anything with Archie. <laughs> Okay. Well done, Archie. Oi. You're a good You're boy. You're a heavy boy. Good boy. This lump needs to go off for testing. It could be something nasty that we don't know about that we need to do more things with, or it could pop up somewhere else. So we need to go check out what this is. Hi. Oh, hello. Yeah. How are you? Hello. Look at your bandage. Hi, Hi Mum and Dad. I feel like as my mum and dad were so worried about me and it didn't even nothing happen to me except had my little stick cut on. You were fun here and hanging with your friends. That's awesome. Aww, Thank you. How do you go with the IVs and stuff? Yeah, you have terrible veins. Yeah. I just want you to, every day, just keep an eye on that little wound. Yeah. So he can have his stitches out somewhere between 10 to 14 days. Oh. Probably 14, but 10 is okay. probably enough. I'm going to take you home now. All right. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Oh, Bye. my gosh. Have fun away. Will do. Thank you. See ya. Don't get bitten by any bees or blue bottles or... <laughs> cute. Such a cute dog. Okay, let's have a look. At Sash in Sydney, it's been two hours since Exotics vet Olivia took blood samples from Azula to try to find out if the pet macaw has eaten rat bait. Oh, perfect. 53. So she's definitely not anemic. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing there. I'm seeing lots of red blood cells and I'm seeing lots of thrombocytes, which are basically the cells that are there to help clot the blood. I know that because she's got a really nice quantity of red blood cells, that she's not anemic and she's not losing blood. And so either she hasn't ingested the rat bait or the treatment that we're using is working. You're going home, Azula. Home time. <coughs> Yay. Here she is. Who's that, Azula? Hello, baby. Ah, here Hello, we baby. go. Who's that? I'm really relieved to be able to reunite Azula and Shani today and to be able to send Azula home. Big girlfriend. Ah. 
Oh, what a good girl. We get Azula out of the cage, she goes to Shani straight away. You can see they have such a special bond and Azula loves her so much. I think she's excited to go home. I think she knew you were here. Are you so happy to go? Oh, stop it. Oh. So her blood test came back normal. There's no evidence that she's got any kind of clotting disorder whatsoever. When I took the blood from her vein, it clotted straight away. There was no bruising or bleeding. So I'm pretty happy that she's not having any issues. Shani's gonna have to keep a close eye on Azula over the next few weeks, make sure that she doesn't seem lethargic or unwell in any way. And let's hope that Azula doesn't give her owner any more trouble and stays out of mischief because we don't wanna see Azula here for eating rat bait again. What do you think about that? Happy to go home? Ah! She's a lucky ah! girl. Yeah. Hey? It's just mummy, is that? Your mummy's girl? You're mummy's girl. And in London, a month after Scott performed marathon mouth and nose surgery, rescue dog Wilbur has made a remarkable recovery. The one year old British Bulldog is now breathing much better with a lot more energy. Scott also removed excess skin folds from his face so the constant irritation on his eyes is gone. And life is looking far more promising for the sprightly young rescue dog. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.